Now is the time to know God's purpose for your life. Mary Crowley Ministries has been traveling the world, equipping and preparing people on how to find God's purpose for their life through conferences, preaching engagements, prophetic meetings, and youth outreaches. Join Mary Crowley for God's Word for you today. Now is the time to be heard. Hello, welcome to Now is the Time. I'm Mary Crowley. You know, we have a really exciting program today because I'm going to be talking about 1967. It was the year that the Jesus Movement started in Southern California, but it was also the year that was called the Summer of Love. That in 1967, there was 100,000 young people that basically went to San Francisco because of a song that was on the radio that was, Do you, are you going to San Francisco to wear a flower in your hair? Well, 100,000 young people did go up to San Francisco. And you know, many of them dropped LSD. A lot of them were smoking pot, you know, grass. They were listening to music. A lot of new music came out, such as the Grateful Dead and different bands like that. But also, they were experimenting with Eastern mysticism. Only to come home, and this is where the generation gap started. And the hippies just emerged on the scene. Well, there was one young hippie named Lonnie Frisbee that at 17 years old, the same year, 1967, that he went up to a mountain right outside of Palm Springs called Takwitz Canyon. And a lot of hippies would go up there and they would, you know, they would, there was waterfalls up there and they'd be in the waterfalls and they'd be painting, they'd be doing drugs, they'd be partying, whatever. But Lonnie went up there one day because he was really distraught about some things that happened in his life. So as usual, he dropped a hit of LSD but this time, he started having flashbacks, and he was in this place where he was so distraught, he cried out to God, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. And that's exactly what happened. You know, in, in his documentary that recently came out, he talks about how the canyon just started to change, and all of a sudden, he had a vision of Jesus. And Jesus... He said he saw all of these people that were kind of milling around and they were all in the dark and they were, it's just like they had nowhere to go and they were bumping into each other and they were lost. And Jesus told Lonnie, he said, Lonnie, I am shining a light upon you and I'm going to use you to preach the gospel to young people and they're going to come to know me. And so that's exactly what Lonnie did. Lonnie came down off from that mountain, changed. Now he had a scholarship in San Francisco and so he went up to San Francisco and he started preaching the gospel on the street corners of Haight-Ashbury. Now at Haight-Ashbury during that time it was a haven for hippies. There was you know hundreds of them that would go up there and, and it was very colorful, very cultural and it was just a really unique place and Lonnie probably fit exactly right in there. But Lonnie didn't really know the Bible at this point because he had just gotten converted and had this visitation from God. And so he started preaching, Jesus is coming back in a spaceship. I mean, that might sound outlandish to some of you, but here he was into Eastern mysticism and he was into uh, transcendental meditation and he was into all these other things before he became a Christian. Now there was a man named Ted Wise that had started the first Christian commune called the House of Acts in Nevada, California, because they didn't see God moving in the churches. They said, you know, we, we read about Jesus in the Bible. In fact, it's really funny in the documentary, Ted, when he's being interviewed, he starts saying, you know, I would think that Jesus was a sergeant in the Marine Corps to hear, you know, a lot of people preach about it. But he said when he actually started reading the Bible, he said, you know what, Jesus was a pretty radical, cool guy. And so he said, you know, we're not seeing churches really move the way Jesus to go and feed the poor and to reach the lost and to heal the sick. And so that's what they started to do. They started going out into Haight-Ashbury and reaching the hippies, reaching the lost. Well, one day when Ted was out there, he saw Lonnie preaching the gospel, you know, Jesus is coming back in a spaceship. And he said, you know what? We're going we're gonna to bring this guy into our commune and we're going to train him and teach him. And so that's exactly what they did. They went up to Lonnie, they invited him to come, in, you know, to live in, in their Christian commune, and that's exactly what they did. And for one year, Lonnie was discipled and trained. And, you know, this is such an important principle, you guys who are listening to me who are Christians. It's important that we need to train up those who are younger, that don't know, you know, the Lord, that don't know the Bible. Because what did Jesus do for three years he took 12 men, 12 disciples that he mentored, that he ate with, that he walked with, that he taught. And when he died, literally those 12 men changed the world. 
Well, I believe that we're in a, we're in a time in history that there's another revolution at hand. Only this isn't a revolution for, for bad. This is a revolution of righteousness where God is going to raise up a standard against the enemy. And just like 40 years ago, 1967, now in 2007, it's 40 years, Lonnie Frisbee was used as a tremendous catalyst for the Lord in 1967 when he got his visitation on Tokwitz. You know, here he was in Nevada in this first Christian commune, being discipled and mentored by, by these Christian people. And they would go, you know, into Haight-Ashbury. They even opened up a little soup kitchen where they started feeding the poor. They started discipling and mentoring people right on the Haight. And this is what happened. Charles Manson started coming in to their little soup kitchen and for six days they preached the gospel to Charles Manson. But he didn't listen and he walked away and it was right after that that those horrible killings came place, you know, that whole helter-skelter situation. And this is just a point that many times God will bring the gospel to somebody but they'll reject it. You know, I'm thinking about a story that, you know, the horrible killings in Columbine when Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold do you know that just a week before those horrible, you know, shootings where 13 people were killed, one teacher and 12 students, you know, and isn't it interesting that, you know, Jesus, of course, was the teacher and, and the 12 students were, were the disciples. Well, anyway, the situation with Eric Harris, he was at a Christian concert that someone had invited him to a week prior. And there was a youth pastor there that was up on the stage, and he was, he was just sharing some things about God, when all of a sudden he felt a very strong impression that there was somebody there that was going to kill somebody or had killed somebody. And he literally for five minutes pleaded that that person could be forgiven by God or they could come forward and not do this thing that he felt such a strong, that such a strong impression from the Holy Spirit. And so this is the deal that God is constantly seeking and wooing people to come to him. And that's exactly what God did even with Charles Manson before the horrible helter-skelter murders. But, but let me tell you what happened with Lonnie. Lonnie ended up, after be, being there a year, he really felt that God had called him to come down to Orange County, that there was a woman that he had used to buy drugs from named Connie, that, that God showed him that Connie was going to be his wife. And so he hitchhiked down, he found Connie, he brought her up to Tokwitz, and he baptized her you know, they have these waterfalls and springs there. He baptized her in the waterfalls. And when she went down into the water, into the water, you know, when she was baptized, she had a vision where she saw Jesus on the cross. And, and when she came up, she was just sobbing. I had Connie on my show last year, and Connie told me this story, but she was just sobbing. She was instantly converted. And her and Lonnie ended up getting married a couple months afterwards. Well, you know, Chuck and Kay Smith, they have a, now it's a world-renowned uh, denomination called Calvary Chapel. And it started right here in Southern California in Costa Mesa. It was a tiny little church of just about 40, 50 people for 15 years. And Chuck and Kay used to go into the streets of Laguna Beach, you know, in 1965, 66. And they would see all these hippies lining the streets on the sidewalks, you know. And Chuck would, would look at Kay and he goes, dirty hippies, why don't these people take a bath? And that's when Kay looked at, at Chuck and she, she said, Chuck, we have to believe that God is going to touch these young people because these kids are the same age as our children almost. And so Chuck said, okay, Kay, let's believe that God is going to touch these kids. And so Chuck told his kids, listen, if you see a hippie, if you run into one that's a Christian or you run into a hippie, bring one home because I want to talk to, to the hippie. And so one day, Chuck Smith's daughter's boyfriend saw Lonnie hitchhiking by the Orange County Fairgrounds with a Bible in his hand. And now Lonnie looked like Jesus. He had long hair, beard, you know, he was wearing these guru shirts, and he had a Bible in his hand. And John swung over, picked him up, and, and he said, hey, listen, I'd like to bring you home to meet, to meet my girlfriend's father, who's a pastor. And Lonnie said, sure. And the minute that, that, that Lonnie brought him home, I mean, that he was brought home, all of a sudden, when Chuck... Uh, when Chuck opened the door and saw him, he said there was just a chemistry between them that he instantly just took a liking to them. And Lonnie felt so at home with Chuck. And so this is what happened. They hit it off and Lonnie eventually and Connie started going 
to his church. Well, he started teaching this little Bible study on Wednesday nights. And before you knew it, there was literally hundreds of kids that started coming and lining up sometimes two to three hours in advance to go to this Bible study because the power of God was starting to move. The kids were so hungry for the power of God. I mean, they would see God move in these meetings in tremendous ways. And so literally what happened was so many people started coming to this little church that they had to move into this big tent. They literally had to construct a tent and start uh, renovating and buying a building. And so that's exactly what happened. Two to 3,000 young people within a couple months started descending upon the church. And the interesting thing is they started bringing their parents to church because they weren't coming home sometimes till 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And when they would tell their parents that they were at church, the parents didn't believe them. They said, sure, I don't believe you. And they said, well, if you don't believe us, come with us to church and you'll find out. And so literally the parents started coming and they started accepting Christ and it started mushrooming into this whole movement. And so they ended up starting to have these mass baptisms down at Corona Del Mar Beach, where literally sometimes two to 3,000 kids at a time were being water baptized in the ocean. Well, now Time Magazine got wind of this, and they started doing stories on it. In fact, a couple of helicopters were, you know, hovering overhead and getting shots of it, and they started interviewing Lonnie. Lonnie started becoming a public figure. And this is what happened. Time Magazine even made Jesus Man of the Year on the cover of Time because of this phenomena. And so before long, you know, this, this thing everywhere Lonnie went, things were happening. I mean, he'd get up on this little park bench and he'd say, hey, come to God, God loves you. People would just come up and start weeping. Everywhere he went, things were happening. Everywhere Lonnie went. I mean, he'd be at a, you know, at a movie, his wife told me. They would be just in line getting popcorn. And all of a sudden, somebody next to him would start talking to him about God. And then they, well, all of a sudden, the power of God would come upon them. And they would get saved. And the guy behind him. And everywhere they went, stuff was happening. But what happened with Connie was that she never had any time to be alone with Lonnie. And so she eventually left him. And Lonnie was just devastated by this. And so it was just horrific. And so Lonnie continued to serve the Lord, but secretly he started, you know, sinning. Secretly he started going back to what he knew, you know, what he had found pleasure from in the past. And secretly, you know, Connie even told me that he started going back to gay bars. And he started having relationships uh, with, with other men. And so this is a situation. In 1993, Lonnie died of AIDS. But this is the good part. Lonnie, a couple months before he died, he finally understood that God had called him. See, every father in Lonnie's life rejected him. You know, a lot of them didn't want to. Like Chuck Smith loved him, but you know, sometimes when you've got that rejection inside of you, it just causes people to reject you. You know, Lonnie's father left him at an early age. Lonnie's stepfather had issues with Lonnie. And so every father in his life left him, and so he never really understood the father part of God. But this is the great thing. Lonnie finally got it a couple months before he died. The Holy Spirit revealed to Lonnie that God called him as a father. And just like the prodigal son, you know how God, remember the story of the prodigal son was where the, there was two sons and one of the sons had wanted to go in everything he had. He wanted to go and spend it and he did. And when he was totally broken and no money, he finally said, at least I can go back to my father's house where I can be a servant. It would be better than I'm living here having to feed some pigs out here. And so when he was a far way off, his father saw him and ran. And finally, Lonnie got it. 